Hello Scorpio and welcome to your monthly forecast. I'm Nicholas Ashbaugh. This reading can be used for Sun, Rising, Moon and Venus. Let's get straight into your channeled messages. The first thing that I was shown in dreams was a celestial object like the Earth. And then I was given a phrase that I had to do some research on, which was escape velocity. In very basic terms, what this is, is the speed that you need to move at in order to escape the gravitational pull of an object like Earth. So when we send things into orbit, they don't always have to go that fast. But if something was to go beyond the Earth and out into space, it would need to have this escape velocity. So let's break it down into how and why this is relevant for you. I feel that many of you are on that ascent, getting ready to engage with like the star energy in tarot. But there are a couple things that could be pulling you down. So I featured the devil card at the top because what might be happening for some of you is we call it a guilt trip. Basically, it could be a parent or a friend or even a boss that would say something like this. If you truly love me, you wouldn't go. Or what am I going to do without you? Or I'm really nervous about you doing this. I'm not sure if you can make it. So they're putting out doubt or fear or obligation uh, and using them as anchors rather than lifting you up and encouraging you to try something new and allowing you to really engage with what we see the potential being the eight of wands. In some of the decks that I have, these are even rocket ships and that's what brought my attention to that right now. I feel like you have the potential to really get things moving in a positive direction and you could probably go from this eight of wands to the star energy by the following month. If you don't let whatever might constitute the devil, could be fear, doubt, anxiety, or an external force that I talked about, um, if you don't let that anchor you down. Um, the next thing that I'm getting here for you is that some of you may have a little bit of anxiety. Now, it could be because of what we just talked about. Someone might be sending these sort of fearful thoughts your way, but it's normal for all of us sometimes when we're entering into something new to have a second thought or some cold feet. So I was shown specifically feet without shoes and I felt the cold sort of, you know, environmental energy coming forth. I think there are two things that could be feeding into this. One we just talked about, but the other one is just overthinking. And that's what I put here with the seven of cups at the very top. Um, so some of you may be worrying about potential things that could go wrong. Um, you may be worried about, well, what if I do it right? And um, people figure out that, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of just winging it or whatever. There are all these thoughts that can go through our heads. I'd like you to take a deep breath and just do one step at a time, one day at a time, uh, one moment at a time. And as you start to see that you can consistently hit it out of the park, you're going to be fine, Scorpio. This is your moment to shine. You don't have the time for whatever might be constituting that anchoring energy to sort of exist anymore because I see this moment not just of escape, but it's ascension, ascension to the next level. So without any further delay, let's give the cards a shuffle and see how you can get to that next level. Close your eyes if you will, take a nice deep breath with me and just allow for your mind to become clear so that you can receive guidance in all the highest forms. I welcome in the angels and guides as well. And I'm grateful that all of you are here. Okay, let's get started. So we've got change and, and transformation right at the center in the form of the death card to be expected. That's good stuff. And there's the star in hopes, fears and possibilities. So that's good. Okay, let's get everything organized here. How's everybody doing this month? Drop me a note in the comments section. Let me know maybe what your dream or desire is and what the challenges are, what represents. Uh, oh my gosh, I love this. So we got the star twice. Isn't that very, very cool to, when there's synchronistic energy like that? But yeah, let me know what your challenge is. Let me know what your dream is. And, um, and hopefully by the end of this reading today, I'm gonna give you the tools you need to get through that. Sorry, I got distracted by the twinning stars here, which is super cool. Okay, we got a volunteer for wealth. Fascinating that it came through as unconditional um, love. And I was talking about one of the tools of 
kind of entering into that devil territory, which is, you know, if you loved me, you wouldn't leave. This person would never do that if it's the right connection. Okay, got a few twinning cards here. Okay. Let's get started, folks, with the super powerful star energy that came through here as your catalyst. So the catalyst helps you make the necessary change, action, and movement in your life. The star in reverse has very specific messages for you. It's saying, first and foremost, don't dim your light. If someone truly loves and supports you, they won't expect you to be less than who you are in order to have their acceptance. Full stop. So if somebody wants you to be less than you are, they're not your advocate, right? This is also a reminder to you that you shouldn't be afraid of showing all of the colors in your rainbow, um, really expressing your true desires, wishes, and personality so that the people and the world can really um, see you for who you are. And when we think of people that enter into this star energy, it's singular, it's bold, it's out there. Um, so the thing that sets you apart, although when we're children, we just want to blend in, you realize that when you're an adult, it's that thing that actually helps you um, find success, be memorable, and oftentimes that's the key to longevity. So if you've never done it before, now is the moment to really be as bold and unique and as singular as you can. And if you've been muting or dimming your light, now is the time to spark um, that inspiration and shine brightly. And for some of you, you may have tuned in today because you're thinking, Nicholas, I don't know what to do. I'm at a crossroads and I need some insight. Well, we'll get that. We're going to help you find your light and find your spark again. Okay, Scorpio? Everything starts with the center card and you have change at the center. The question here is not if change is happening, but if you're ready to embrace it. So we have the death card. Let's just look at the traditional one for comparison. As we take a look here at the Rider Waite Smith card, what I like here is that we see that the energy of change is something that we are all beholden to. So we have a religious figure, we have a king, we have a child and a mother. All ages, all statuses have to basically answer to the call of change and transformation. If you want to look at this in a way that is maybe a little less triggering than looking at a skeleton or something like that, imagine instead a chrysalis, which represents that in-between or liminal state between one state of being and another, basically going from a caterpillar to a butterfly. There's that center stage where it's all mixed up a little bit. It's a little bit soupy. It's a little bit, um, you know, less clear, a little foggy. So. This month, I feel like some of you know where you're headed, the butterfly, but you have to get through the, the sort of soupy phase where things haven't quite gotten clear yet. And the card that's helping you clarify everything is the moon. If we take a moment to look at the traditional Rider Waite Smith card, there is actually a path to success right in the center. Um, the things that are kind of blocking the path are fear, represented by the lobster, and then having to choose between what you were trained to do and what your instincts are telling you. This is a moment in time where you really want to lean into those instincts. This is your compass this month. Let that be what leads you forward. If we look at this illustration, we can see two trees that are deeply rooted in their own sort of path and way of being. And again, looking at this traditional card, um, that's the alternative to the dog and the wolf. Uh, and someone in your life may have a very rigid way of thinking or being, and they're very planted in those beliefs. So a good tree is able to bend and is flexible so that it doesn't break when there's a big windstorm or something like that. I feel like your flexibility is going to be key, as is that other person's. So try to meet in the middle if you can. And if not, again, you have a path in front of you. You have to basically listen and heed that call because there's a lot to celebrate. There's a lot to embrace if you're able to do that. A moon is a satellite. And a satellite follows, often blindly, and remember what we talked about, escape velocity. Some of you are tired of being a satellite. You want to be your own sort of uh, beacon in the sky. So this is your moment if you want to do it. I got that in the dreams. I'm seeing it in the cards. And when we're looking at these cards here, this is basically showing change. And it, what needs to change is this maybe... Uh, energy of blindly following or always doing what is expected and instead you're going to go down that center path 
and decide to do something uniquely your own. Let's take a look here at the deep past. We have the page of wands and the card is in the reverse state. For some of you, this could represent being very stubborn in what it is that you want to do. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you are clear that this is what you want and you're not gonna let anyone get in your way, based on the cards that I've pulled prior to this and also based on the intuitive downloads, I think this could actually be an asset to you. So continue to follow through on those thoughts. This reminds me of a needle and thread, even though we're looking at a snake here. Um, so what you're gonna do is each day continue to do the work to create the tapestry of whatever it is that you wanna do. The only thing I'd like to put out there for consideration is to keep an open mind, and this is especially true when it comes to like researching and looking at alternatives because there could be a way to get something done faster based on new information, new technology, new insights. So we're always learning, we're always expanding our thoughts and our knowledge. So you can continue on the path that you want, but there may be an even better way to do that if you're open-minded. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the recent past. We have Four of Wands reversed and the Emperor beneath it. Let's talk about this. So um, first of all, I love that we have this sort of iris at the center of this Four of Wands, and it's saying it may not be here just yet. Here's your traditional Four of Wands. It represents partnership. So for some of you, this partnership, this friendship, or this alliance, it may still be something that you're very much envisioning, but you aren't seeing just yet. And the first message from the universe is keep the faith. Keep the vision and hold the space. Like the movie Field of Dreams, you have to build something before people can come in. And some of you, you're working on yourself, your own self-esteem, your own sort of personal development. Some of you could be creating structures in your life, physical or symbolic. And you just really wanna trust in that hard work because it will come to fruition. Now, I think it's really telling that in the deep past, I was telling you to keep an open mind uh, because what we're also seeing here is that there is age, wisdom, or experience, or possibly a combination of all of those, that is part of this partnership. If we look at the traditional emperor card, it's an old man or a wizard or a very smart person. And basically, this could be a, an old soul in a young body. It could also be someone that just has a little bit of age and experience on you. But this is exactly the partnership that you might need in order to bring something to the next level. So try to stay open because there's something unexpected about this partnership that might be coming in. Again, when I say partnership, it doesn't have to just be love. Um, this could be for career, for personal development, a new friend. What I am seeing, though, two stars. There's a really strong, and I look at this, forget about twin flames. I look for binary stars when I'm looking at relationship spreads. So the fact that we got two stars and we got a past life energy here, um, tells me that this is going to be pretty powerful when it comes into your life. So be open to new, wise connections and try to stay open-minded if they didn't meet your expectations. All right, the other thing here that we see, if we take it out of relationship stuff, and you know that I look in broader terms here, this is also your ability to manage. This is a boss card. This is a partner card. Some of you are actually being challenged or given the opportunity to step up a little bit and lead the pack if that's something that you want to do. Speaking of work, career, and finance, we have a really great card here, the Nine of Pentacles, and I love all of the angel wings on this. So uh, a couple of facets of this card that I want to talk about. We'll look at the traditional one while I'm speaking. So in the traditional card, you'll notice that there's a little snail at the bottom, which is all about pacing, but this card is one of independence and abundance. So this is the card in the upright position. The reversal of this card is reminding you, you don't have to do all of this on your own. You don't have to hold up the fort, make everything happen, bring it all together. Um, that's why we have this sort of leadership energy coming through in the form of the emperor. And this could also be people that want to help you out, the four of wands. But what is necessary is you letting go. So speaking of escape velocity, I have never thought of it in this way, but sometimes we are the anchor that holds ourselves in place because we think like it's a micromanaging energy. I have to do this, I have to do that, I'm the best one for this. But if you keep doing that, you can't get past being rooted in this moment here, like this tree card here. Um, in order to liberate yourself, you have to be more like a seed in the wind. And so this is allowing you to kind of rise above that. Delegate if you need to. Uh, lean on your resources, uh, whether it's your mon monetary resources or your your friends, your family, the people around you that want to help out, okay? Uh, because this card can be 
overly independent when reversed. And so one of the encouragements from Spirit this month is to open up your heart and your mind and your, your space for, for additional help. I love this card because it's, it's an end goal. I, I can take either the Nine or the Ten of Pentacles. They're both amazing. Nine of Pentacles is independence, sustainable wealth and abundance, and just the ability to really enjoy all of that. So that should be the long-term goal. It may not be the reality here and now. This card represents where your head's at, though. So you're going to be evaluating things from that long-term perspective. So rather than immediate gains right here, right now, really look at what tomorrow, what next year, what the next decade is going to bring. And when you start to get more strategic, you start to call in more um, opportunities and more synchronicities. All right, as we take a look at the near future, this is probably one of the trickiest moments here. These are conversations with people in your life that you may not need to waste your time and energy on. Here's your traditional five of swords. What I like about this one is we can see that those are slippery conversations. When I think of an earthworm and you try to pick it up, it's, it's hard to hold on to, it's squirming around. Sometimes when you try to have an important conversation with someone, they do the same thing. It's a pretty telling thing if they're trying to get out of it. Five of Swords represents a person who has a hard time listening, may or may not be able to take accountability. Typically, when they are listening, they're really just trying to figure out how they can get their next point across or how they can shoot down whatever it is that you just said. And at the end of the day, kind of like that inchworm or that uh, earthworm, it's not worth it. Just let it go. Let them go back from whence they came. Focus on bigger, better, and brighter things. The angel wings on the crowning card are reminding you to build your own nest, your own nest egg. You don't need the permission, the understanding, or even the stamp of approval from whoever it is that might be kind of like creating that conversation with you. This can also be our own internal voice where we say to ourselves, you're not good enough, it's not going to happen. All the things that I was talking about at the very beginning with the devil that won't allow you to ascend Sometimes we're the anchor for ourselves, as I just said, so we're going to let go of those things as well. Let's look at you. You're coming through pretty powerfully here with the Magician card, uh, one of my favorite cards in any given deck. I always like to see how they interpret it. So a reversed Magician is still powerful. However, the challenge with a reversed Magician is focus and faith. So if you believe in yourself, as I talked about earlier, you're going to be able to see options and opportunities a lot easier. And... Just because you can do everything, we have every single element represented here, it doesn't mean that you can or you should do it. So discernment is one of the key elements of success in a reversed uh, magician. So do less but do it better. And sometimes restraining from adding something or doing something is a sign of age, wisdom, and leadership. Less is more. Okay, slow down. This is a, what, a cheetah? Um, a fast cat. And with the card in reverse, it's saying better to not take shortcuts, to make sure that you're putting quality in there rather than just quantity um, and just doing it right on the first attempt. That's going to be key here. So be discerning, be uh, slow if you need to, and just be mindful of what it is that you're trying to do. All right. Now, this can also be an encouragement to see through others sort of persuasions or manipulations. You have the ability to be very persuasive. This is a persuasive card when reversed. But like energy attracts like energy. So be mindful of other people that may be trying to do exactly the same thing. Um, trying to use smoke and mirrors, because a magician can represent that, um, to, to get the point across. Rather than doing that, be authentic, um, be as transparent and as clear as possible. And in doing that, you're going to win the favor of others because they'll know at the end of the day you have the most important thing in leadership, which is integrity. If I don't believe in you, if I don't trust you, how am I going to be able to follow you and, um, and allow you to basically lead me into the next thing? And it's, it's just not going to happen. So you have to have that integrity, okay? And if others lack it, it's your chance to differentiate yourself and shine because you have that integrity. All right, let's see what's going on in the environment for you. We have the Queen of Swords, Queen of Swords in reverse. This could be for some of you what we're talking about when it comes to naysayers or noise or not even constructive criticism. This could just be criticism. So take it with a grain of salt, uh, Scorpio. I think it's important for you to 
really know who you are. And as I said earlier, when it comes to success, progress, fulfillment, you get to write the script. This is someone who speaks more than they listen and may not be as supportive as they can be, okay? So that's one interpretation for what's going on in the environment. Now we can look at this in a broader lens, which is this is a moment for you to really use your voice in a way that's impactful because there's a lot of people out there saying things, but are they making sense? Are they really making an impact? So being succinct and being constructive will set you apart and help you connect with your own rising star energy here. So if we were to turn these in the upright position, be positive, be strong, um, be an example for others, and this will set you apart from all of that. So we have the star, the star was in the reverse state. Everything that I mentioned earlier holds true with this. And this is about not dimming your light, not trying to fit into the cookie cutter expectation, and really making sure that in this moment in time, you're doing something that aligns you with your soul's path. And if you don't know what that is, then it's, this is a perfect opportunity this month to try new things and find something that sparks your intuition, sparks your inspiration, your heart's desires. It's like something that really just gets you excited about getting up in the morning. This could also be for some of you a new relationship coming in or a new partnership coming in. Two stars, like attracts like. Both of you though may be working on confidence or maybe uh, at a point where you're afraid to just sort of really let it all out there. So this is your moment to shine. I don't know how else I can say it, but that. Now, there's also room for more, more than one star in a company, in a family, in a relationship. And just because one person is currently shining doesn't mean that the other can't or won't soon. So keep that in mind, too, when we're looking at like attracts like. It's good for strong energy to be out there because that means that you'll, you'll pull in someone in the same frequency. Speaking of that, we have the Queen of Wands here in the outcome. And I'm going to, of course, on this one, also show you the traditional card. What I love about her is she's kind of magical. In the traditional illustration, you see a queen in the desert holding a sunflower. She's basically creating growth and movement where others couldn't. There's a dearth of opportunity. There's no water, there's no plants, but lo and behold, she's holding a flower. She is capable of magic and following her instincts. So the queen of wands is not someone who follows someone else's footsteps. She invents new things. She thinks of new paths. She follows her instincts and all of these things lead to success. In this illustration, we see a mother protecting her eggs. Looks like there are three eggs there, kind of like the three of pentacles, which is success and recognition. So this is a month where if you know what you, what you have in store, what, what's possible, do what you need to do to secure that too. So this could be legal protections, patents, things of that nature, making sure that everything is where it needs to be. And this is an incubation period. So I mentioned, you know, we're looking at this metamorphosis um, idea when we're looking at death. You could be at that final stage ready to hatch or spread your wings into something brand new like the butterfly. Okay, this is a card of taking charge. Definitely. Queen of Wands. I put her right up there with the emperor and the empress. Um, and we got the emperor here, of course. So this is your chance to basically show your boss power, show your um, instincts and your ingenuity and surprise people and shine. I really feel good about potential. We'll be looking at it in the second part of this four part extension here. But when we look at careers, I feel like this is a great month for development. But we always start the expanded forecast with health first. So let's get into that. Then we'll look at wealth, love and destiny. Starting off with your health. This is mind, body and spirit. Let's see what the Oracle card has to say here. So we have the rainbow waterfall here, miracles. I get two very clear messages with this miracles card. One is that the outcome could surpass the initial expectation or diagnosis or whatever. Um, so keep an open mind, get second opinions and really focus. This is the second piece on a positive attitude and a positive outlook. And also be very kind to yourself and your body knowing this. If you're bouncing back from an injury, from a setback, from a surgery, and it changes the way your body is, it's about finding a new normal, a new baseline, uh, not trying to chase after a past, quote unquote, perfect version of yourself. 
because we're all aging and changing and there's going to be moments in the future where you're going to look and feel different. That body got you to that point. So love your body. Try to find the best possible outcome and you may be surprised at just how much your body can um, progress beyond a limit or a setback. But it is about both being optimistic and realistic um, and gr grateful that our bodies even have the, the capacity and the potential to heal and fight off things. So I'm seeing a better than expected outcome, but I also got intuitively, not just even with the card, but I got an intuitive hit that some of you may still be dissatisfied because you want to go 100% back. You have to look at the best possible outcome and then embrace that. Let's take a look at all the cards now and see what general messages are coming forth. Change is necessary. We have the death card here. Some of you are feeling stuck and this card is reminding you that the way to get inspired and to move forward is possibly a change of environment. So whether that's your job or your living situation, the death card is showing that there, there could be a need for some necessary change there. We can look at it at face value. Some of you may have just lost someone that you loved and that really is a necessary wake up call. You may think to yourself, what am I doing? What path is calling to me? We looked at that earlier illustration of the moon where there's a path in the middle. So that's one thing that I'm seeing there with that as well. Um, so whether it's your own health challenges or a loved ones, uh, there could be this sort of brush with that, that, that death energy that basically wakes you up and helps you realize that life is finite and you have to make the most of it. I also get the energy around pregnancy. We have the eggs here on this Queen of Wands card. The moon itself represents um, cycles, particularly, uh, you know, the moon cycles. So for some of you, you could be getting pregnant. There may have been a challenge in the past with a lack of fertility or a miscarriage, but I actually see a silver lining here. And that is sometimes when you stop trying or you've given up, um, things can actually magically happen. Or perhaps some of you have found a surrogate or have found a path towards adoption. I'm getting uh, uh, some sort of positive news after a stalemate for those of you that have been looking at that um, at starting or expanding the family. Other things that I'm picking up on here in the general spread, some of you need to take a closer look at interactions with um, maybe supplements and prescriptions or possibly prescriptions and your diet. The magician in reverse can show chemistry out of whack. Uh, so there might be something in your life that's causing like the blood chemistry to be off a little bit. Make sure that if you do take any supplements, you tell your doctor about it. And if you are on uh, prescription medication, you talk about interactions with diet with your doctor as well. That's everything for health. Let's move on to wealth, your resources, life purpose, and career. We have a card here that shows unconditional love. So for some of you, this is just about gratitude. If you were lucky enough to have a family member or a mentor or a coworker that provided that love to you, you can just say, thank you, I appreciate you. Some of you may be seeking out this kind of mentor in your life. And we see it in the not, uh, this actually came in the recent past. So some of you may have already stumbled upon them. Some of you may be calling them in. We have like the Queen of Wands energy here. Um, but the most important thing in this moment in time is to put the unconditional love inward and think to yourself, I love this about myself. Um, if there's areas that you want to improve, give yourself the support to work on that, to create that. But you have to love and support yourself first and foremost. That is the foundation that all great things are built on. So love, acceptance, and support. It has to be here for you first. Then look at, basically do an audit of friends, family, and loved ones and think to yourself, is it going both ways? If I have their back, do they also have my back? Or is it just a sort of one way energetic contribution? And where it is just one way and you're not receiving, it's time to let that go because that's going to allow you to have the escape velocity to go to the next level. Okay, let's look at wealth. Let's take a look at what's going on here. It's interesting that relationships are playing an important part here, but they are. That's what I'm seeing. Okay. So we're going to break this down into three categories. Those that are employed, those that are seeking employment, those that are happily retired, and I also put students in that mix as well. So for people that are currently working, I'm going to keep it real. The first card is change. In order to reach the next level, to get past any sort of setbacks in your career, um, change is necessary. This could be deciding to reach a little bit higher and go for a new position or maybe transfer 
uh, and move to a different division or take a pivot and say, I'm going to repackage my skills and try this. You could stay in the same company and do all of this, but it would be a conversation that would need to be had with management. And when we look at how that might uh, sort of pan out, we see that there is support in the, in the form of the four of wands, support possibly in the form of a manager, but there will be a little bit of friction here. Not everyone's going to get it. Five of swords, as we mentioned earlier, can be a card where people are just um, having a difficult time hearing you. So that's the one thing to be prepared for is sometimes not everyone's going to get it. But as long as you get it, that's the key. We see breaking through a glass ceiling, being able to go to the next level. Really good that we have a, um, a queen of wands here, a boss card. So some of you have the capacity and the potential to step into a new position or to pivot within an existing company or to try something completely out of your comfort zone. But as long as you love it and you're doing the best that you can do and you want to do it, I feel like you are set up for success. Some of you are feeling frustrated. You're thinking to yourself, I'm done. I'm like, sometimes we just simply get to a point where we've learned or experienced everything that we need to. And if there isn't a path to sort of like going to the next level, whether, whether it's deciding to transfer or try a different job title, etc., then it's an invitation to see what else is out there. And that, by the way, is very much connected to the moon card. And uh, we talked about sometimes being right, right between like instinct and what you were trained or expected to do. Your path is somewhere in the middle. So you may just simply be realizing, okay, I got to try something new and that's okay. So the only path to the next level is to go through this change element for you this month. If everything is good for you, this could simply just show a little bit of stagnation. So I would still challenge you to try on new things. Some of the new things that you could do, you could focus on um, getting involved in a professional network. That's four of wands. You could also get involved with public speaking. That could help. Uh, I think the key thing that you want to avoid is any sort of unnecessary arguments or disagreements this month. Just step away from this five of swords energy because by and large, everything is really going in the right direction. One thing that people are noticing about you is you have the capacity uh, to work on your own and you also have the capacity to really make something that can last the distance here because we talked about the longevity piece of the Nine of Pentacles. So it's a good month overall if you can wrap your head around the necessary change. Going back to what I talked about, we'll pull the slide up too just to remind folks. Some of you have already made your mind up that you want to move on to a new job and this is a nice segue into the next piece, but a boss, a family member, a loved one says something like, well, if you do this, what, what am I going to do? Um, if you really loved me, you wouldn't, you wouldn't decide to spread your wings. That is going to inhibit you. That is really sort of connected or tantamount to the devil energy. You want to be mindful of that. Let's go ahead now and move on to the next category, which is those that are seeking employment. Um, if you're a job seeker this month, uh, first things first, actually, the Emperor card shows me self-employment capacity, as does the uh, Queen of Wands. So some of you may decide just to bypass seeking a job if you've saved up enough or if you have a partnership possibility coming through where you could start a business with one or more other people, especially the uh, either the Queen of Wands or the, the Queen of Swords or Queen of Wands, then you might have what you need to just do it yourself. So I'm absolutely behind that. But for everybody that's seeking a job in a traditional path, here's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, at the very beginning of the month, there may be a little bit of lack of progress. The death card can just show stagnation. It's also though a call to action. It's time to try something completely different from the past experience. So rather than simply staying within the same template of job sort of type, reach outside of that industry or reach outside of your comfort zone and really try something that you've never tried before. I think that's going to be, uh, first of all, more satisfactory. And this is also where you might be able to break through some of the stagnation. The Four of Wands is a networking card and the Emperor is a mentorship card. So tap into existing, like this could be an old teacher or friend. This could be a coworker that you worked with. Get some advice or support from them. That's the first place that I would look. I talked earlier about the importance of staying focused. And sometimes the magician tries to spread itself too thin. And this is 
like basically the magician can do anything. I think it's important for you to keep an open mind, but when you're starting to canvas and look for job opportunities, just try one of these at a time rather than kind of like putting out a batch of 100 resumes, for instance. Do it in a batch of three or five or 10 and see how those are doing. And then you can kind of like fine tune it based on feedback from that. What's frustrating nowadays is there's so many digital ones that you just don't always get feedback. I am aware of that. So this is, we're gonna go back to what we talked about way at the beginning. I'd like you to figure out what differentiates you. Standing out is gonna be so important. And so whether it's in your, the way that you present your website, if you're creative, it could be like your portfolio. Um, if it is a traditional resume, it could be that introduction, the, the, the mission statement, whatever it is where you can show a little bit of your writing style or flair. Uh, it could also be if there's a prototype or something that you're working on for um, like an interview or something, just showing your particular flair or approach that is unexpected, something where it's just like, oh, not everyone would have said or done that. That's, that's what's gonna help you out, okay? I do think you might be able to make a personal connection. So that's why the Four of Wands is saying, if at all possible, to, to go to sort of like a networking event, a job fair, or to somehow have like a, it could be a FaceTime or a Zoom call with someone, but we have two stars. So two people that when the stars align, when everything is great, it's kind of like a good date, you just vibe. I feel like it's important to have that face-to-face -face time if you can. Um, can you find something? Yes. Uh, but, but that's the challenge is trying to, first of all, just get out of your comfort zone um, to really work the network and try to get the face time with someone. And if you can do that, then I feel like um, great things await. But the beginning of the month is slower than the end. And it may still take one more month than you expect. So be patient. For those that are retired, then I'll look at uh, students. So retirees, many of you are very clear that like, you know, we live this life once. We may live many lives, but this is, you got one life to live in this body. So the star card is saying right now, you've got nothing to lose. There's something important that you want to do. Could be travel, could be putting more energy into love and relationships, whatever it is that you want to do, you're getting a clear indication from spirit to go for it. There's a lot of energy around uh, communication coming through. So use your voice and use your voice in a way that you've never before. Speak up. If you want something, ask for it. Um, what I also see is that you've done a decent job creating a nest egg, many of you. So it's a chance for you to enjoy some of that. The star card, though, it can be about spiritual development. And some of you may decide to do something this month like a, a retreat, a spiritual retreat, yoga, um, or Pilates, or something where you're working on mind, body, and spirit a little bit, even though we're looking at uh, wealth here. This is a chance for you to really go that, that next level. So absolutely. If there's anything where you're just feeling like it's boring or you're stuck, let it go, okay? Students, you might have already graduated. The death card represents the change or graduation from one level to the next. Um, I think this is the most important moment for you and a lot of what I was just talking about for job seekers a few moments ago really matters for you. I want you to reach for the stars. Um, really go for this and don't feel like you have to mute your light. Um, and many of you are trying to think of like even how to make the world a better place. That's what I'm getting with all of this stellar energy that's coming through, how to shine a light on what matters. Absolutely. Um, but using your voice, using your communication skills, and, um, and really being direct is important, okay? Let's go ahead now and move into the next category. We're gonna look at love and relationships. Your catalyst card here is Heart of Source. It was reversed. The message on here is all-encompassing love, unconditional acceptance, and serenity. A nice connection to the unconditional love message that came through in wealth. Health and wealth are often interconnected. So source energy being both you and then whatever you call the divine. The more you can get connected to that, the faster you can get into this star energy. We have twinning stars here. So what I see already in existing relationships, which is where we're gonna start, is this sense of balance and equity, whether or not it's showing up like attracts like. We're gonna look at those in a relationship looking for love and single and happy, starting with existing relationships, and we've got the twin stars, which is great. What's going on in an existing relationship? Change. For some of you, a new baby, because I talked about pregnancy and birth. 
So that could simply be all this is about. Death of the old version of the relationship, birth of the new. And in that comes perhaps some miscommunications um, because the Queen of Swords in reverse, she's a little short. The Five of Swords doesn't necessarily listen so well. What do you, what's kind of working in your favor? Strong commitment, good leadership, and a sense of wanting to make this work. The big opportunity in all relationships, whether things are going swimmingly or there's a challenge, is simply being as present as possible, validating the partner, saying, I see you, I appreciate you, I love you, and then also checking in if things aren't going well and just asking, how can I help you? Because um, I can see that it, you know, maybe you need some time or energy or help from me right now. What can I do? Rather than trying to swoop in and fix it, ask how you can or if you can, and if not, just be present with that partner, okay? This death card can represent any significant change. It can be for the better, it can be a significant challenge, so maybe one or both of you has um, have recently dealt with maybe a loss of someone. Uh, I just mentioned birth, it could also be graduation, maybe someone just graduated from school. A life change, and even just a big birthday. <laughs> and it can be like that mortality moment where you're checking that sort of like, have I done everything that I need to do? So in this moment in time, clearer and more um, loving communication would be advantageous. If everything's going well, here's what I see. First of all, um, both of you could be at a significant breakthrough. So that change card could show both of you on the rise. Um, and in that situation, there's room for two stars. I said that before. Neither of you has to mute your light. You may just have to figure out how to juggle all the resources, time and energy, etc. Okay? I like what you've built together. This is a beautiful sort of nest and nest egg. Um, I love that we have pretty compatible cards here when we're looking at Queen of Swords and Queen of Wands. Two great boss energies. One is better at talking than listening. So I, that's why I think the main thing here is improving communication. Together, you're kind of unstoppable here with this magician energy. Uh, I do feel like one or both of you is just tied in too many directions at once. Get back to this Four of Wands energy, which is friendship, support, holding space for each other. There are no cups. I'm doing a relationship read and there's no cups. So sensitivity, intimacy, together time, playfulness, all of these things will enhance the existing relationship. All right, let's focus on those that are seeking love in this moment in time. Can you find it? Yeah, absolutely. Two stars. Um, that to me is cosmic love. That is something beautiful. Past life energy. Here's the challenge. Honesty. By the way, this is also something that may be lacking from existing relationships. Something that you want to keep to yourself or keep hidden. It's going to find its way to the surface, though. It's better if you just talk about it. So um, you may date someone and find out later that... Maybe they have a kid or maybe they're, not, they're on a rebound because the death card could represent a breakup and they're like weeks or months out of that. So just take your time and get to know the person because there is, for some of you, you're going to find some baggage with them. There may also be something really unusual with respect to age or experience. So you, you were looking for someone in a certain age bracket, but you're getting someone that is either older or much more experienced for their age. So there's they just kind of give off that um, sort of air of wisdom and age, even if they don't have that. It feels like some of you may also have something that either stays in the friendship zone or began as friendship, and you're like, I don't know if I want to take it to a love level. So that's something you're going to have to sort out. There are multiple choices here, multiple opportunities for love. Um, past life energy or someone from the past, like an ex that's coming back. If it's an ex, I almost feel like it's better to stay in that energy of you know, the past. But in, in the uh, present and future, we have two different op opportunities or personalities. The Queen of Wands, she may actually have a child because I see the eggs on this one. The Queen of Swords in reverse, I'm looking at her connected to the star. She may just be a little bit more focused on, um, and I'm saying she, it can be he or she. They may be more focused on career or personal development in this moment in time. I think the biggest challenge is um, what are you looking for? And also, have you done the requisite work on healing and loving yourself? Getting that Ace of Cups basically in the upright position. All right. Focusing now on those that are happily single. First of all, good for you. Some of you are completely happy with being in this zone because we have um, the death card here at the center, which is saying been through that. Some of you might have lost a partner and you're really now just focusing on 
other things in life. The star card is about putting yourself out there and we, I still think you can meet people. This is about finding your soul family, whether that is through um, school or arts and crafts or sports or activities. Now is the time to do that. I see you being very active uh, if, if you are single and happy. What else is coming through here? I think that some of you may also be at a point where you're like, I'm really happy with what I've built in my life. And I had a person ask me a question like, and I'm usually ready for this, but I, I wasn't ready because um, I was getting like a chiropractic adjustment and my head was in a different space. But they were like, what's the next goal for you? I mean, I have professional goals, but they were asking much more sort of like life purpose. And I eventually got to the answer. But I want to pose that to you, too. What is it like? Let's imagine today was the last day um, and then you were going into soul review. Did you do everything you wanted to? And if not, what are you going to do tomorrow to bring it into focus? The moment you are clear on what it is that you want, it feels like the universe is going to come swooping in here with these star cards. It's just waiting for you to make a wish. Make a wish on that star. I mean, that, that's true of everybody this month. We can connect it with this uh, catalyst energy. But if you're really ready for something, this star wants to come through, okay? And I think I touched on all the different relationship statuses. So let's go ahead now and move into the energy of destiny. You receive two cards here, Gnosis and Apocalypsis. Gnosis, of course, is deep esoteric knowledge that can actually help you onto the path of um, enlightenment or salvation. So many of you may have gotten a moment of clarity, epiphany, and you think to yourself, I know what I want to do. This is also the understanding that uh, at a certain point in our lives, we don't need to lean on anyone else. We actually have everything that we need within. So if you needed to hear that you are capable, you are ready, you are self-sufficient. We even got that here in the form of the Nine of Pentacles. You're hearing it again through this card. You are connected to Source, and you are also the source of your own success and fulfillment. Change. It may seem like it's the end of the world, but it isn't. Um, so the Death card and the Apocalypsis card, that's a mouthful, it's one and the same. Big changes sometimes feel like the sky is falling, but it really isn't that. It's just an opportunity to celebrate and embrace the changing world in, in which you're living. And at the end of the day, seeing just how powerful you are. Those are pretty powerful messages, speaking of that. We're going to now get a little bit more clarity on three areas, sun rising and moon sign. And uh, this is great for those of you that are cross watching. So let's give the cards a shuffle, see what spirit has to say. Sun, rising, and moon. I love all three of them. Let's begin with the sun sign messages first. We have the Ten of Pentacles. Um, by the way, this is a really powerful Ten of Pentacles. The Tenth Pentacle is within the ninth star in the center. So yes, there are ten. It's not nine. It's just hidden. And that carries with it an important message. If you're looking for something in the form of a job, a relationship, a partnership, a contract, it's not going to be immediately obvious. You may have to look between the lines or a little bit deeper or again in a package that is unexpected. Your, because this can represent marriage or contract. So something is available to you, but it just requires a little bit of digging, a little bit of imagination, and the ability to see beyond the surface. And that's what I'm getting with this. Great month, by the way, for those of you that are looking to move into a new house, to sign a contract, to express love to someone, possibly even propose, all of that would be a part of the Ten of Pentacles. So really good things, family, connection, advancement when it comes to money and personal development, very much connected to what we saw at the beginning with the star, okay? In Rising and Ascendant, you got the Eight of Swords. We have this beautiful chrysalis that came through here, which represents, like I said earlier, the in-between stage between the caterpillar and the butterfly. So some of you feel a little stuck because you're waiting for things to happen. You can't necessarily rush development. That's one thing that I would say with this. And things are probably better than they seem. In the traditional Eight of Swords, we see someone here with a blindfold on and they're not sure where to go. Sometimes this is simply being uncomfortable with not having everything spelled out. 
This is where you're going to engage with the Queen of Wands and you're going to be imaginative. You're going to tap into your inner knowing and decide this is my path and understand that it may not all be spelled out for you. This is your chance to redefine, to, to make your own script and to trust that that's exactly what you need to do. The only key sort of limitation here could be the one that you impose upon yourself or that others um, project upon you. So you're going to break through that because the caterpillar has to break out of this to become the butterfly. Um, otherwise, you'll stay stuck. So push through disbelief, push through fear, reach out for help if you need it, and try something different. All of these things will help you break through the Eight of Swords. Let's go ahead now and take a look at moon sign messages. And we have Nine of Cups, Celebration, Good News, Wish Fulfillment. This is one of the best cards that I can pull in respect to or regards to any plans that you might have made. This is, a, this is cause for celebration. The only cautionary note, and it's a minor one here because the card isn't reversed, but it's just not to go to extremes. So if things are going really, really well, look at how long it took to kind of build things up and just be wise. Don't overspend, don't overreact, don't work too hard. And as long as you are in that sort of energy of moderation or temperance, you're going to be okay. Take some time to express gratitude, to have some fun, and to enjoy today. Let's go ahead and take a look now at your final question. This can be anything that I haven't um, already answered, something very personal to you. Close your eyes, focus on the question. Let's pull a card and see what spirit has to say. You received the five of pentacles in the reverse state. If we're going to get this, I'd rather get it reversed. It does represent healing and the end of a cycle. However, if you asked me a yes or a no question, it's pretty easy. This would be a no. The reason being is you may not be able to get the support that you need in whatever it is that you're looking at. Here's the traditional card. It's a lot easier to understand what's going on here. Um, typically, the person that's in here, or the two people here, can't support one another in the way that they should, usually because they're both focusing on the healing. And even if they are trying to help each other, there still may need to be additional um, support coming through. It's typically a card that lacks what you need. So in the form of money or benefits or resources, it's just shy of what is necessary. So in a, in a negotiation, ask for more. If someone is used to getting more from you than they should, now is the time to push back on that because it's not allowing you to grow. We see a wilting flower here. In a large part, that is because many of you are used to giving and giving and giving, and we need to kind of amp up on the receiving or the reciprocity, if you will. This also has to do with healing relationships with family and the past and just healing the inner child. From a health perspective, we want to pay special attention to the feet and ankles. Sometimes if you've had a previous sprain or break, I've had both in my life, um, you might have things like aches and pains. You may have a little bit more vulnerability there. Make sure you're we wearing the right pair of shoes or that you might replace your shoes if they're worn out. Make sure that you're careful um, if you're doing any sporting activity as well. Mostly I look at this though as a money card where you need to ask for a little bit more, you might not be receiving enough, or a relationship sort of card where someone in your life hurts you or vice versa and there's healing that can be done. Focus on the healing and more importantly, because there were so many beautiful cards this month, Scorpio, focus on getting into that star power, that star potential. You got not one, but two stars. So there might even be a chance for you to uh, really have two moments in the spotlight. You might have a second sort of chapter coming around where you just surprise yourself. Keep me posted in the comments below and let me know what's going on. It's been my pleasure to read for you. If you enjoyed this, I hope you did, by the way, please give me a like and subscribe and remember to opt into notifications. You may also find it beneficial uh, to follow me on social media. It's always my full name, Nicholas Ashball, on all major platforms. Remember, I do not offer private readings, so if you see anyone doing that, block report, let me know, stay safe. If you want to give back, you can do it through stickers and uh, super stickers, super chat, and also through memberships. All of these things allow me to create new things like podcasts. So I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being the best part of what I do here on YouTube. I wouldn't be here without your love and support, and I really, really appreciate your time and your energy. Take care of yourselves. Have a great month ahead, and we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye.